against the wall We bow down and say you are God Every mind We bow down and say you are King So let's start right now Why
friends, you are almost welcome. Those joining us online and those who are here physically, we welcome you and we thank God for you. And we know that God is with us. Father, we thank you and we praise your holy name. Thank you for allowing us, King of Kings, to come into this sanctuary for the Lord to have a time to worship you and King of Kings to give you thanks. We honor your presence, dear Lord. Father Lord, I pray that you answer the prayers of your children. That King of Kings, every person who has come here with a request, Father, they will go back when their requests are answered. I pray, King of Kings, King of Glory, that you will cover all of us with your precious blood. Be with those who are still on the way coming, O oh God. King of Kings, be with those who are tuning in online from every part of this world. Father Lord, be with, thank you. We pray that King of Kings, every person who is in need, it will be answered. And this service, we put it into your hands, O oh God. We pray for the speaker, we pray for the skit ministry, we pray for the ushers, the leaders, and every person that will take part in this service, that Lord God, all will be for your glory. We thank you and we give you praise. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are outside, you can come in. You can come in slowly. And friends, it is a holy communion service. The Lord be with you. I request us to sit. And let us pray. This is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All of us, we are going to join in that prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by your Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And friends, hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. All of us, we are going to join in the correct of the day. Today is the second Sunday after Easter, and we are going to join together in that correct. Almighty Father, who has given your Son to die for our sins and to raise again for our justification, grant us to put away the refuge and the malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in the pureness of living and truth through the merits of the same your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I request us to stand again. And uh, when you stand, you give uh, your neighbor a high five and welcome them to church. Welcome them to church and tell them you're welcome. Those who are outside, please come in. Those who are online, you can greet your neighbors well and tell them they are very welcome. And also, we welcome our praise and worship team. They are very beautiful and handsome. Give them a mighty, mighty hand clap. And we welcome you to lead us in the moment of praise as we continue to worship the Lord. Amen. Good morning. 
Good morning. I know it's a cold morning, eh, but it's it's live enough. Good morning. Tell your neighbor this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it.
worthy to be praised. There is no one like you, Jesus. You are amazing. You have been good to us, Lord. We thank you for your glory, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for the things you do for us every day. We thank you for the blessings you give to us, Lord. We thank you for family, Lord. We thank you for the gift of food. We don't take it for granted. We thank you for the gift of shelter. We thank you because we are alive, Lord, for such a time as this, Lord. Who are we, Lord, that we can be here and experience your presence, oh God? Who are we, Lord, that you are mindful of us? Lord, we thank you for your power and we are thankful because you have been good to us. Lord, you have not left us. Lord, you have not forgotten us. Where would we be without you, Lord? We would have been shattered if you did not be for us, oh God. Thank you, oh God. We are here to say thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. When our enemies thought we were going to be finished, Lord, you have been there for us. You have been with us, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you, O oh God, for salvation. We thank you because, Lord, you came and you died. And, Lord, we can experience true life because of you. Lord, we thank you. And we are here this morning to say thank you. Thank you for your presence, O oh God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for keeping us, O oh God. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, in our midst, we have things that are burdening us. We have friends who are not well. We have friends who are sick. We have people in hospital who are sick in body. Some of our friends at home who are sick, we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will heal your people because you told us that by your stripes over 2,000 years ago, you gave us healing. So we pray for healing for all our friends and family members who are not well in the name of Jesus. We have friends who are struggling financially. Lord, we pray that you provide those who are looking for school fees we pray you provide tuition we pray you provide lord who are those who are looking for jobs remember them in the name of jesus we pray for those who are struggling in their businesses lord remember them in the name of jesus that lord you shall come and have your way in your children's lives and lord we pray for our church we thank you so much for saint francis chapel lord we pray that you'll continue to come and have your way we pray for our leader we pray for our chaplain, that, Lord, you will continue to anoint her for the ministry that you have given to her. We pray for her family, that you will bless them and protect them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the clergy that she works with and everyone that's involved in the running of the church. Lord, come and have your way and anoint them for ministry. Lord, we also remember the larger church, the church of Uganda. Come and have your way, oh God. We pray for our bishop. And the bishops that he works with, Lord, anoint them, keep them, protect them from the evil one in the name of Jesus. And we pray that, Lord, through your church, you will bring revival in this nation. Lord, we pray for the nation of Uganda, that it shall experience revival in the name of Jesus. That the will of God will be filled in this nation. That the power and the presence of God will be filled in this nation. We dedicate it to the Lord. We dedicate our leaders to you, O oh God. We pray for our president and everyone that's involved in running of our nation. Lord, give them wisdom and knowledge. Have your way in their lives. And I pray at the end of the day, your name and only your name will be glorified in Uganda. Lord, we come before you dedicating to you our individual needs. Friends, if you came with a burden in your heart, lift it to the Lord. He's here to listen to you. Lord, we pray for our individual needs. Some of us are hurting. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us have issues that we can't even share with anyone. The Lord is here to speak to you. The Lord is here to, 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 to work on your burden. Just lift it to him and tell him, Lord, I lift up my burden to you. Come and have your way. Lord, we pray for your children that, Lord, they'll experience you this morning that the presence of God will come and have your way in their lives. In the different needs that they have, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will come and have your way. And Lord, we pray that throughout this service, your presence will be manifested. We pray for the word that, Lord, it will come strong. We pray for the preacher that you will continue to anoint him for your glory. And Lord, we pray that by the end of this service, we shall have an experience of your presence in this house. We pray for our friends on their way that you'll quicken their footsteps and they'll come and join us and we shall all be in one accord. We thank you and we honor you through the name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. You're most welcome. It's good to have you. Those who are outside, you're also welcome. Those who are online, you're welcome. As you have your seat, please tell your neighbor it's an honor to sit next to you this morning. We shall now have the ministry of the word. Praise the Lord Church and good morning. Our reading this morning is from the book of Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 11. Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that the grace may increase? By no means we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or do, do you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was risen, just as Christ raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if, we have been re for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will, certainly, as we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like this. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we shall no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Then if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also rise with him. For we know that since Christ raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mystery over him. Death, the death he died, he died to sin once for all, that the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, written in chapter 6, beginning to you from verse 60. We say together, glory be to you, O Christ our Lord. John chapter 6, verse 60. John chapter 6, verse 60. On hearing it, many of the disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? What if you, were, you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and their life. Yet, there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe. And who would betray him? Friends, the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God for thy holy gospel. We shall keep standing facing the holy table and boldly confess what we believe in through the words of the Nicene Creed. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and he has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please turn to your neighbor and welcome your neighbor in the presence of God. Thank them for braving the weather, the rain. Today was very tempting to stay home and be online while in bed. But you are welcome. Welcome. For you are out, you're also welcome. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Wow. Hallelujah. Our friends online, we love you. I know today many of you have decided to be with us online, but we love you and thank you for being present. You are all very welcome. Do you know how your neighbor is doing? Did your neighbor smile at you today or they were gloomy? Why were they gloomy today? Please. Good. A smile. Yes. A smile will, and for us ladies, if you want to keep looking sweet 16, the secret is keep smiling. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate King, uh, Team Hezekiah for leading us so well. Thank you so much. I know my son Ronnie is getting married soon. Ronnie, please come. Let people see you. We want to support you and pray with you. Very committed in that team. is getting married soon. I don't know if I'm spilling the beans, but anyway... <laughs> Yeah, that's Ronnie. He's a member of this choir. He's a care and is getting married. Please support and pray for him. Praise the Lord. We are praying for you. Hallelujah. Please help me turn to your neighbor and ask them the neighbor, the friend they invited today for service. Cold morning is always a tricky one. Eh? <laughs> Even those online, who did you invite today to sit with you? Yes, please make sure I invite someone because lately the suicide rates are increasing and especially in our community. Why? Because of depression. So don't allow anyone to stay at home. Challenge them and encourage. If they don't have transport, it's more blessed to do what? To give than to receive. So on that note, we want to welcome those who are worshipping with us for the very first time. Just put up your hand. Visitors, in this cold morning, do you have a visitor? Okay, there is one behind. Just put it up so we can see. You're welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to pray with us. We have a letter for our visitors. Leave your hand up until the ushers give you that a letter. Thank you so much. Please, ushers, just write in the corner. Let's receive our visitor. If you're looking for a church, you have a church where you fellowship, please, when you go back, thank them for the wonderful work they do. But if you're looking for a church, this is a place to be. Why? Because Jesus resides here. Hallelujah. I've seen some council members. Esther, beautiful as always. Good to see you. Welcome. I've seen our treasurer, Dr. Sue, and my sister. I worship Sarah. We welcome you all council members. You're dear, and we always pray for you. By the way, I've also seen my coolest dude. You know he loves to hide somewhere. John, you're welcome. Yes, thank you. God bless you. And all of us, we are special in the presence of God. The most important thing is your name written in the book of life. Ask your neighbor, is your name written in the book of life? Are you really saved? Jesus is coming. 
So think about that even as we listen to God's word. Let's uh, appreciate our clergy that are with us today. Uh, Odnan Sam sits in the family office with uh, Mrs. Anita Mbeagala, and they do an amazing job. He's Salongo, and then Reverend Barnett. Thank you so much for the ministry. Another Salongo there. We have Uncle John. I don't know whether you are Salongo or not. Oh, <laughs> Uncle John, we welcome you and Reverend Scovia and Nalongo to be. Thank you so much for loving God. And it's always good. Feel free. Your, our offices are wide open. Feel free to come anytime. Uh, we are ready to pray with you and for you. Praise the Lord. To all the students that are here, praise the Lord, students. Good. We are praying for you and we are trusting God that you're going to excel. Okay? Remember, we say that no St. Franciscan is supposed to get a retake because we cast retakes out in Jesus' name. We are called to be the heads and that not the tails. Just to remind us that the examinations have been rescheduled to commence on Monday, the what? 29th grade. Please read. Don't be a, like some Christians we hear about who do not read always in my, night prayers and in the morning they go for examinations and they write in tongues. That is madness. You're going to fail and fail bitterly, okay? Please read prayer without action is dead. Pray and read and the Holy Spirit will remind you what he has taught you. We are privileged today to I'll come back with the notices. But we are privileged today to have a dear brother, a friend, one of us, who is going to bring God's word. He's known to us as Uncle Jim Rex Biam Gisha. He's coming to bring God's word today. He will be coming. I'm so happy to see you, my brother, Warden uh, Rodney. Yes, and all our wardens that are here, teaching and non-teaching staff members, we welcome you. Me and Warden uh, Rodney, we are in the same department, Dean of Students. Thank you for loving the young people and always being there to support them. Praise the Lord. Before our preacher comes to bring God's word, let us receive the drama team. God bless you. Gwe, that, that home that we visited, that person accepted Christ together with his whole family. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Happy birthday. Banang Yoshaini. Welcome to the floor. Praise the Lord. How are you? I can see everything is... Oh, wow. Oh, I, 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 I'm also a people. I'm also a people. Ah, uh, wow, wow! Happy birthday! Do oh. you happy birthday? To you. Oh, look at him! Is he? I understand if you see me last yes. because this gender is powerful. How are you? Uh, uh, Muna, oh, well, I can say it. Oh, well, the pastor. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. How are you? Not bad. Ah, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, it's party after party. Are the wheat cookies here? What? What? Miriam? Miriam? Miriam, yes. what? 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 Which, which, which cookies? You see, you see this one. Is, is. Are they wheat cookies? What are they? You get high. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let's do a loyal toast. A yeah, loyal toast. Is it? Yeah. 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 It is perfect. Wow. Are you the one? Gwen. Miriam. Are you the mama? Eh, eh. So, love. Wheat cookies. Dr. T. Which, Which soda, soda is this? Gwen. Which, Which soda? Kano. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Pasta. Perfect. Pasta. Pasta. Mm? This is perfectly blued Wait. from the sauce. <laughs> tell him. Let me tell you. Hmm? Unga, you're not drinking. First, get this guy a glass. You guys. Miria. Are you the mama that I know? I am the one. What's, what's this? Laban. Tell you. Gwen. When did you start? Sevo, this is not your birthday, okay? Let us concentrate. Gwen, how are you people doing? Like Miriam. How, how Miriam. is it? How are you feeling? Miriam. Do you believe what you're seeing? Laban, let me tell you something. Come out. Please, preach to him. There is time for everything. Okay? Victor. Okay? This is not praise and worship time, okay? Let us get serious. Are you here for a sermon or you're here for the party? But Victor, you remember that you used to be the chairperson of Father's Union. Sure. Now, Victor. Are we at a Father's Union Gundi? Victor. Or we at the party? Aaron. Pastor Laban. First Timothy. Chapter 5, verse 23. Is it? You can flash it for us. Aaron, don't you work with St. Francis? Uh, which it is okay. For today, we are here for yeah. enjoyment. Because he works for St. Francis, he's St. Francis now. Get but you here. people. Aha, uh -huh, it's there. Firstly, stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illness. Rabbi. Do you know that Rabbi, Wait. even Jesus turned water into wine? Do you know the master of applying scripture out of context? At Do the you know that devil is the master? You people, what you're doing, is it giving glory to God? No. Are you giving, Miriam, uh. is this birthday celebration of yours giving glory to God? There is time for giving glory to God. I, I thought you died to these things, Miriam. I thought you live a new life in Christ. More than the alcohol. Eh. You people. You come, we go outside. It's Laban, okay. You, can you Christians. Him, leave him with his soda. It's okay. You Christians. Your Fanta is here. Let you Christians. Are you the same people we are always Laban. together with in Laban, church? please. When, when stop. you come to church, bring your. Uh, you Christian. You Christian. Stop acting like David, the Holy Spirit. Eh? What have you done? Miriam. <laughs> Are you the one what speaking? You Are you the one speaking? Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Now over to you. Some of you look amazed. Are all of us different from these people? I know today is Sunday. The hands will be up when worship songs are being sung. But what will happen if there is a birthday the next day? What will you be drinking? Which music will you be listening to? We are called to be alive in Christ, and that is supposed to cost us something. God bless you. Per timing. Per timing in a salvation walk. It's never easy. My name has been mentioned. I only indicate that last year, May, me and my wife, we made 25 years. And in these 25 years, the Lord has blessed us with three nations. I remember the Atambo Wemijisha, Ayebare, Nyinemijisha Nkunda Nyonyozi, and Ayebazibu Yampiremijisha. Those are the three nations the Lord has blessed us with. And I come today to say, dead to sin, but alive 
in Christ. Our Heavenly Father, let your word that is living and active speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Dead to sin. The Bible is very clear. Either you are alive to Christ or you are dead to sin. And so we ask, what is sin? Amplified version in 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 says, Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness, meaning ignoring God's law by actions or neglect or by tolerating wrongdoing, being unrestrained by his commands and his will. Lawlessness, according to English, therefore means a state of not being restrained or controlled by law and hence considered unruly. You have seen in the party unruly people. Being dead to sin means you are no longer responsive to any attractions that sin presents to you. You are simply like a big dog looking at a pack of daughters. It doesn't need, it doesn't know what to do with it. As a dead body does not feel hungry or get attracted to nice food, so you are towards sin-related attractions. Profoundly, at the cross, Jesus carried all our sins and in him died so that we can be dead to sin but be alive to God's righteousness. And God's righteousness, that is Jesus, as the scripture puts it very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, that it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, he himself, that is Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Also, Paul tells us in Romans 8.13 that for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So, because we are dead to sin and alive to righteousness, sin has no power to reign in us. But God's righteousness has the power and the right to reign in us. Paul tells us in Romans 6, 11, as we had the reading, that in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Who lets it? It's you. It's me. Verse 13. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from the death to life. Who does it? You. Me. And offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master. So Paul is telling us that we have the following laws or responsibilities to carry out. One, never again allow sin to be your master. Or have dominion over your body. Or be motivated by sin's evil desires. Number two. Never again that your body be used for wickedness, but rather as an instrument of righteousness. Number three, when it comes to killing the evil desires, you have a very big responsibility to carry out in working out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, part B, that continue, the word continue means continue, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. 
he also confirms the same. In 1 Corinthians 19.27, that no, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So as a Christian, who refuses to take self-discipline in working out his salvation, but chooses to continue to live in sin, a fact that disgraces Jesus Christ and re-crucifies him all over again. Today, many of us, according to Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, that you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. In my language, my brother C.U. says, you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. So still struggling with sexual immorality, sexual perversion, masturbation, and pornography, lies after lies to cover up the lie that you have told, and giving false testimonies, financial greed and cheating, envy and jealousness, hatred and unforgiveness, shrine worship, witchcraft, alcohol, domestic violence, being our characteristic. Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4, that it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tested the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. Why? To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. When you as a believer continue to live in sin. You are saying, Jesus, you did nothing. The nakedness you suffered on the cross was for nothing, making him be crucified or again. With impunity, allowing the old self continue to reign, publicly disgracing Jesus, but letting old self die to pave way for the new self created in God's image is praiseworthy. That is an effort the Lord wants to see in us. In Ephesians 4.22, he says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self created to be like God in the true righteousness and holiness who has helped you to put on. Wasn't it yourself? Put off, put on. Being dead to sin, but alive to righteousness means sinful nature smells badly to you. Hence, you don't even dare approve those who commit the sin. And your heart's desire is godly new self evidenced by striving for righteousness. He tells us in Romans 6.21 that what benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in the death. No one will regret you. How are you, Mr. Drunkard? And you say, I am fine. That is why Paul tells us to now switch to the new self. In Ephesians 4.25, he says, you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbors. 26, in your anger, you do not sin. 28, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work with their own hands. 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their need to benefit those who listen. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, scuffle and slander and malice. So the evil tree of sin has been cut. And the new tree of righteousness has been planted and it must stand tall to display God's splendor. And God is watching and waiting upon you. Isaiah 61 verse 1 says that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. What is that good news? Jesus is the good news. The gospel of our salvation is only in him. Ephesians 1.13 says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Hallelujah. So, consequently, Isaiah calls us that believe 
As who believe the oaks of righteousness, you are an oak of righteousness whom God has planted with one purpose to display his splendor. God's splendor means God's utmost beauty. Listen to Isaiah 61 verse 3 part C. That there will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. God has planted you to display his splendor. What is an oak? An oak is a very big, firm tree giving us hard timber for building, for furniture, for making ships, meaning God's hope is whoever interacts with you should see God's splendor mirrored in your character. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Lord's Spirit. Whoever should look at you should see Jesus. When you say, I am a Christian, they should be able to see Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Job of Uz, Uz Bank, our Uganda today, stood as an oak of righteousness and displayed God's splendor. In the Job chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible tells us that in the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Listen to verse 8. To Satan the Lord said, There is no one on earth like Job. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Four things characterized Job. One, blameless. Two, upright. Three, God-fearing. And four, shunning evil. And with integrity, he never compromised no matter what, as evidenced by his wife in the physical realm and by God himself in the spiritual realm. Job chapter 2 verse 9 says that the wife said, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. In verse 3 part B, to Satan, the Lord said, and he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to reign him with any, without any reason. There was a testimony from the earth, the testimony from heaven. As a holy people, you can be an oak of righteousness by shunning evil, meaning switching allegiance to God by turning your back to the wicked, sinful, and mockery invitations that the world presents to you. Being holy does not mean without sin, but rather being set apart, a child of God set apart, born of God, not husband's desire set apart, to, light, to be the light of the world in this dark world set apart for a reason. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15 says, But as, as he call, who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So you are not an ordinary person. God has set you apart for a reason. As a holy nation, therefore, that displays God's splendor, you ought to die to sin, no longer attracted to wicked counsel, doomed destined ways of sinners or the conversations of the mockers that look attractive but your delight is in the transformative power of God's word as David puts it in Psalm 1 verse 1 that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked no stand in the path of sinners no seat in the seat of mockers but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. So, dead to sin, therefore, Job refused to trade his integrity. He ever displayed God's splendor, even amidst the parliamentary cash bonanza that we have today in Uganda. Job 27 verse 5 says, Far be it from me that I should declare you right. Till I die, I would not put away my integrity from me. I hold fast my righteousness and will not let it go. My heart does not reproach. In other words, does not accuse me any of my days. 
So Job would not dare support evil as some of us would cover up iniquity by providing safe heavens to sin. Our homes are full of alcohol under the pretext that you don't drink but you might get a visitor who drinks and the hostel rooms are used for adultery. You simply say, you have your girl, here you can be. After all, it is not me who has, not, who has done it. Let me tell you, Romans 1.32 says, Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Today, lecturers can learn from Job about the provocatively dressed campus girls and be able to be dead to sin. Job in 31 verse 1 says, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. You can succeed. Like Job, friends, when you shun evil, you give sin no room for manipulating your thoughts, your speech, and your actions. Evil acts of man start from the thoughts of his heart. Garbage in, garbage out. Hence, be intentional to feed your mind, not with garbage of pornography on your phones. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, part B says, The Lord saw that every inclination of the thoughts of human heart was only evil all the time. So defeating the enemy from your thought life, my dear friends, secures your speech, your actions from every act of evil, hence like Paul, an icon of righteousness, you can securely say, I do as I do, and the Lord will bless you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, and praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. That is Paul speaking with confidence. Change what you think into what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. And then you would say, do, and the Lord will be with you. Due to Job's upright thinking, against the, we, the wish of his wife, and the, the wish and the plan of Satan, Job did not sin with his mouth. Job chapter 2 verse 10 says, He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, the Bible says, Job did not sin with in what he said. Job did not sin in what he said. So from the abundance of the heart, dear friends, the mouth speaks. That's what the Bible tells us. Even a husband that has lost a job and have no source of income and your wife says, what kind of a man are you? You will still not sin. Like Adam and Eve, Sinful acts drive us away from the perfect love of God due to the fear of being exposed. Our actions speak louder than words. Deeds that we have, do they reflect whether we are dead to sin or we are alive to righteousness? Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says that in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So, as an oak that displays God's splendor, how are your actions? Do people glorify God because of those actions? When actions are evil, dear friends, the sinful, uh, uh, they are evil and sinful, we belong to the devil. But when they are righteous, we belong to God. Today we are going to choose a camp. First John chapter 3 verse 5 says, But you know that he appeared that he might take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. 
No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Verse 7, dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Verse 8, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning. So, our refusal to die to sin makes people say, Because praise God is part of greeting. Romans chapter 2 verse 21 says, You then, who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? At that, uh, as it is written, God's name is blasphemed among Gentiles because of you. Because of you. Today, the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing today and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, at this moment, I am not a preacher. I'm going to sit down and I'll ask the praise group to sing for us the song, Just As I Am. If you feel your life has been bending toward sin and today you're saying, I want to put sin to death. I want to be dead to sin. I will stand up because I know where I have been weak, where I have been sinning. I know I have been battling with unforgiveness. Somebody who was busy grabbing our land I would kill him, bury him, the next day get him from the grave. Kill him, bury him, get him from the grave. Kill him, bury him. Struggling with unforgiveness. And yet I know, and unless we forgive, we cannot be forgiven. I don't know where yourself you have not been dead to sin. But we have an opportunity to stand up. And I would stand up and ask the Lord that today I make a resolution to die to sin. And I will not sit toward this side because it will look like hold of holies. I will sit there and I will stand up and put to sin death in my life. If you identify with that, I'll ask you to stand. And our chaplain will pray for us that we die to sin today. But if you're already dead to sin, you are free. Remain seated. But as for me, I know where I'm struggling.
Father, you tell us in your word that if we say we have no sin, we are liars and the truth is not in us. And you continue to tell us in 1 John chapter 5. And you say to us, Everyone who, no one who abides in you keeps on sinning. And no one who keeps on sinning has either seen you or known you. Father, we come this morning. You're calling us to die to sin and be alive in Christ Jesus. For it is sin that nailed Christ on that cross. So as we stand in your presence, we nail every sin again and leave it there. Because it was nailed once and for all through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And scripture reminds us that if we keep in sin, we are nailing him again and again on that cross. So this morning, we die to any form of wickedness in our lives. Come on, just mention that issue that you're struggling with. Maybe it's bitterness. Maybe it's hatred. It's unforgiveness. It is addiction to pornographic material. Maybe it's adultery. Maybe it is sexual immorality. Maybe it is quarrel. Maybe it is gossip. Nail it. Leave it at the cross. Leave it because Jesus nailed it already on that cross. Lord, we surrender every sin that has entangled with your children, with us all, my Lord, at your feet, at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we know that we have been crucified with Christ. And indeed, in his resurrection, we have been raised back to life in him. So it is us, it's no longer us that live, but Christ lives in us. So this morning, you're calling us not to live anymore in sin. So we walk away from sin. We let go of sin. We detach ourselves off of any kind of malice any kind of slander, any kind of gossip, any kind of corruption, any kind of double standard living, immorality, name it, wickedness. Lord, we leave it at the feet of the cross because that's where it was nailed 2,000 years ago. So we want to say thank you for the divine exchange because in exchange, Christ purchased life. Christ brought forgiveness of sins. So this morning we say we choose to be alive in Christ Jesus. We choose to walk with our heads up high, knowing that if we are in you, we cannot live in sin anymore. So Lord, continue to help us to be clothed in the righteousness of God. That is Christ our Lord himself. Lord, may we remain in that right position, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And Lord, may we continue to progressively work out our salvation with fear and trembling and be an example so that when you come, because you're coming for a church without spot or wrinkle, may you find us ready in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We shall continue in that same mood of prayer and bow our heads to the Lord. Hallelujah. This came back as it was in the first service as he prayed. There is an attack on relationships, an attack on friendship. So as we are here in the presence of the Lord, maybe you're here and you're estranged from your mother and father. Your relationship with your mother and father is failing. Maybe you've cried yourself to sleep because of that. Or your relationship with your spouse is also failing. Your relationship with your sister and brother is struggling. The Lord wants to restore that relationship. Just stand up where you're at and let us surrender that relationship to the Lord. The Lord wants to set you free. It's your relationship with your parent, your relationship with your sister. Hallelujah. The Lord is seeing us all as we stand. You know where you are. Maybe it's with your spouse. Maybe it's with your son, with your daughter, 
Maybe it's with your girlfriend or boyfriend. Seen as encroached into that relationship and there is no love, there is bitterness. You've cried yourself to sleep because your father has abandoned you. Your mother has abandoned you. The Lord is here to restore that relationship. Is here to restore that friendship. The Lord is seeing everyone standing and is ready to help. When we are weak, God is strong. Father, we thank you for your interest in a good relationship with each other. That's why you died. First to reconcile us back to yourself and to each other. So you see these your sons and daughters standing before you because their friendships, their relationships at headlock. And they want you to come right in the middle of that relationship. Father, there is an estranged relationship between a mother and a child. A father and a child. As a matter of fact, one, one was raped by a father. And because of that, there has been unforgiveness and bitterness. Father, have mercy. Wipe that curse off the family. Wipe that sin off this family, my Lord. Father, there's been ad adultery in marriages, and for that, a relationship has been tinted and affected. Father, purge every sin from our relationships. Your children stand up that you may reconcile them back to their close relatives, reconcile them to the people that are so dear to them. We are praying for a father and daughter relationship to be restored. We are praying for a father and son relationship. We are praying for a husband and wife relationship. Father, you know the relationships your children are representing as they stand. Please touch where it hurts. Please heal the broken hearted in our midst and let glory and honor come back to you. Thank you for setting your children free and for reconciling us first to yourself and then to one another. Father, we shall hear testimonies when your children have come to say, now I can speak to my mother. Now I can speak with my father. Now me and my big sister and big brother, we are well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we shall continue in that same mode of prayer as our friends sit down. One more prayer item. The Lord is interested in a relationship with you. Maybe you came this morning and you are far away from him. Your relationship with him, mm -mm, you're not certain that it's there. If Jesus were to come back today, you're not actually sure that you would go with him. So Jesus is here to restore that relationship. Maybe yes, your friends have known you that you are St. Franciscan, but you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus wants to be your friend so that he can walk with you. If it's you who wants to put your relationship right with Jesus, just stand up where you're at. It's your relationship with Jesus. Thank you. You're not standing up to me, but to Jesus. Just stand up where you're at. You want to put your relationship right with Jesus. Thank you. Right with Jesus. We can pretend before others, but we can't pretend before the Lord. Thank you. Putting your relationship right with Jesus. So that that attack on your relationship is destroyed. Thank you. I see you up. Jesus sees you. Even here, just walk to the front. Walk to Jesus. Just come. Just come and we pray for you in a special way. Just walk to the Lord. Even our friends up in the gallery, just run. Run to Jesus. All to Jesus. I just walk to him. This is the most important relationship. Most important relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just walk to him. Hallelujah. Just walk to Jesus. Just walk to his altar. Just surrender. When you come, just surrender to him. When you Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord brought you on this cold morning to restore that relationship. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We shall stretch our hands towards our friends that have come to put their relationships right with Jesus. And I'll ask the clergy to also come and stretch our hands towards these God's children that have decided to come back to him. Heavenly Father, it was because you loved us so dearly that you sent your one and only begotten son to reconcile us back to yourself so that we have a vibrant relationship with you. It is a relationship thing. It is a relationship thing, O oh God. And these your sons and daughters come this morning to put their relationships right. So my friends, I pray this prayer, prayer after me. As I pray, you repeat after me. Heavenly Father, it is I, your son, your daughter. I stand before you with my heart wide open. Please forgive me for running away from you. But this day, I come back home. I pray that you come and make my heart your home. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, the seal of ownership, and hide me under your wings. I declare this day that Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my friend. I give my life to you. Take it and make it yours. Please help me to live in fellowship with you as long as I live. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the most important decision that you have made this day and the heavens celebrate. Come on, let's clap for them as they follow the usher. Let's clap, just follow briefly the usher for just a minute and then you'll come back inside. Let's keep clapping for them. Let's keep clapping just briefly. You just follow the ushers and then you come back. Let's keep clapping. May the Lord defend you. May the Lord protect you. The Lord has filled you with his Holy Spirit. Come on, let's keep clapping. Let's keep clapping. The Lord has set you apart. And you are his, you are known by him, and the heavens celebrate because of this. A big hand clap to God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now we are going to give to the Lord. We give joyfully and cheerfully. Why? Great. Let us give, let's appreciate, let's receive Tim Hezekiah as we give to the Lord. And the ushers will wait upon us. Let's be reminded that Christ is our firm foundation. Yeah. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He fail now? He won't
Thank you very much. I request us to sit and we invite those with a special thanksgiving to also come and give thanks to God. Choir. Rain came and wind blew Father, you won't fail now. Thank you for your provision. Thank you, King of Kings. When we are in luck, you are always there, King of Kings, to fill us. Thank you, dear Lord, for today. Thank you for your children, King of Kings, who have offered to you. We pray, King of Kings, for the offering that, Father Lord, you bless it and sanctify it so that it will be used for your glory, King of Kings, in the ministry. And Father, thank you for this, your children who have come out to come and give us special thanksgiving. They have different reasons as to why they are thanking you. And Lord God, you know each and everyone's heart. So Father, we pray that King of Kings, you bless them. You touch King of Kings where they have picked what they have given. King of Kings and might pray. We pray, dear Lord, that you continue to do more wonders and great things for them. Such that they get more testimonies. And Lord God, more reasons to say thank you. King of Kings, all of us, we give ourselves to you. Thank you for those who have given their hearts to your God. King of Kings, we pray that you will continue to be with all of us. We honor your presence this morning. Thank you for your love and mercy. Remain our God as we remain your children. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and offer the peace of God to your neighbor as we sing Peace, peace, wonderful peace, wonderful peace of God. Peace, peace, wonderful peace, wonderful peace. Of God. May we all join in the prayer of humble access and pray together.